All right, so uh, let us now start by just looking at how communication in general has evolved through ages. So, take a guess on what is the first, what was the first kind of communication people uh, did? Was it cell phones? Obviously not. What else? Before cell phones, what was uh, the method of communication people had used? Let us try to trace back. Landlines? Okay. Before landline telephones, how people, how did people communicate? Telegraph, telegraph cable, electromagnetic way of communication or optical communication in that sense. So, turns out that uh, communication as such started with optical communication, fire, beacons. Uh, Greek mythology they say has uh, incidents where fall of uh, Troy uh, was first reported over, I mean Troy and uh, the Greece, the, the places were physically very far apart, uh, several hundreds of kilometers. But the fact that the Greek king won uh, Troy after the Trojan war tactics, right, after this was apparently a very long war, that information reached. Uh, the capital uh, very quickly because there was always one person who was watching for the beacon. Okay. So, people used to use beacons, mirrors. So, you get some light and you want to reflect that you want it, you want. So, there were repeaters also, right. You communicate to me, then I will use a mirror and I will communicate to him. Right? So, you can do multi point communication that is how apparently all communication started. And we of course, know uh, Graham Bell first made a, who is Graham Bell? He made the, were the first patent for telephone. He first actually made a photophone, not a telephone, not that telephone that we know uh, as of, you know, as the telephone that we know of today, right? where he used light and guided through or, or used mirrors to steer the light for uh, communication. So, if you evolve, if you look at the uh, evolution, before 1700s, people used polished bronze, which was work, which will work like mirrors. They would use mirrors, which is uh, again used to direct, uh, reroute information. People used fire beacons, smoke signals. In fact, people used different colored smoke. Uh, to different to indicate different information, but uh, the first uh, formal way of communication was uh, done in 1792. It was a uh, French gentleman by name Claude Chap. Uh, he actually set up a link across the entire France with what are called as semaphore signals. Now, these are just two flags as this figure is indicating and you can see that you know the way you, the way you uh, hold your flags, there was a general understanding that if I hold my flag this way, that would indicate a letter A, something which is a preliminary version of Morse code. And Use, these are called as uh, you know semaphore signals. Um, he linked the entire France with this, and uh, by 17, you know, early 1800s, this signaling was existing in France. This is how people used to communicate. They had 200 relay stations, so there were people who were just whose job was to uh, learn these codes and to physically hold these flags to represent uh, information. We can say this is also an optical communication, it is just that it is visual, but this is the first record of a uh, formal optical communication. Bitrate would mean how fast can you move your flag. So, in one second, people could change information, you could change your signal once. Okay. But after that, electrical communications took over because you know you need a line of sight for this, you need a large number of relay stations, you need so many people trained and doing all this and keeping watch out for the signaling all the time. right? So, 
from that signaling it moved on to from semaphore signaling you moved on to uh, electromagnetic way of communication or electrical way of communication and the first way of electrical way of communication is telegraph. So, Morse code was developed which is similar to the semaphore. So, you have the dots and dashes which represents different uh, alphabets or different information. The typical rate was uh, 10 bits per second. The first transatlantic telegraph was set up in 1866 and incidentally the very first time they uh, tried to establish the link it was a big failure. It was a failure for a long time. On one side you had uh, Lord Kelvin and on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean you had uh, forget the name of the gentleman but somebody else. They, they Their way of communicating was only through this line. They are sitting on imagine there is no other way of communication. They are trying to establish a link from uh, you know two different continents across the sea and they were using the telegraph line to try to see whether they are able to communicate with each other. Uh, you can go back and read the story it is there in Google or you can look up this story. Uh, it turns out that uh, Lord Kelvin was using very low voltages and he was using a mirror galvanometer to detect the presence or absence of uh, Morse code whereas his counterpart was using very high voltages. And so, that used to kind of throw the galvanometer out of uh, scale and it was very hard because, because they did not physically, there was no way of communicating, right. So, there was no way that Lord Kelvin say look I am doing this, it would take months to s go by ship to convey that information, right. So, but then 1866 was when uh, telegraph was uh, trans, uh, trans uh, Atlantic telegraph line was uh, established. Twisted pair was again coming up in another 10 years which is a telephone line, there is also analog communication. So, your speech is converted with the help of a microphone converted into an analog signal. That analog signal was transmitted through a copper cable which is a twisted pair and that was a standard way of communicating for many many years. Uh, once you started connecting many subscribers the data rates were not sufficient. So, you started increasing the, you wanted increased bandwidth, increased distances. So, the twisted pairs got replaced with coaxial cables and these coaxial cables even as early as 1940 could give a 3 megahertz bandwidth, it is a large bandwidth, um, one TV channel. To put it in perspective, today's LTE signal is 20 megahertz bandwidth. Right. As early as 1940 people could demonstrate 3 megahertz uh, bandwidth. One TV channel equivalent to so many voice channels, coaxial cables were used for all the uh, communication systems. But the problem there was frequency dependent loss, the cable loss, the, the cable acts like a transmission line, it has its own inductance and capacitance. So, the frequencies scaling was not possible, bandwidth scaling was not possible. Uh, that got replaced to increase the bandwidth people started using microwave communication systems. And the microwave communication systems were also uh, ad another advantage is you could do a free space communication link with microwave systems. So, carrier frequencies as early as 1948 uh, 1 to 10 gigahertz were used, speed is 100 Mbps. They had repeaters which could work at different uh, spatial locations and transmit the information. Because it is free space, you need to have a line of sight and if you do not have a line of sight or if you do if you are not within the range of your wireless signal, you lose your signal. So, if you want to transport to longer distances, you would use repeaters. So, we are talking as, so as early as 1950s communication system with electrical communication or electromagnetic communication was kind of very well established. Uh, but the limitation was bandwidth, how do you scale bandwidth? And that is when your optical carriers started coming in. Microwave carriers, um, we will talk about the specific frequencies, but you are talking about several gigahertz of frequencies. And you know from your fundamental understanding that the bandwidth or information capacity increases only when your carrier frequency increases. We will talk a little bit more about that. So, optical carriers came out to be a very good choice because the carrier frequency is of the order of terahertz. So, you could modulate at very fast rates, right. So, that is when about 1960 is when you started having optical communication. 
uh, there is a nice again historical reading you can go through I mean this uh, by Jeff Hecht. It is a uh, book by name City of Light we have it in our library also. Okay. Now in terms of optical communication how did things evolve? Uh, the first requirement for an optical fiber optic communication was optical fiber channel and the word fiber optics was first coined by an Indian uh, uh, by name Kapani. He used to work in UK. Uh, he had used optical fibers for a different purpose, not for communication purpose. He had used it. He was the one, it, it, it's credit is to him to coin the word fiber optics. And uh, he had used it for, can you guess for what? Where else, other than optical communication, where else do you think uh, optic, fi optical fibers are used? Other than for optical communication. Endoscopes, right? You could uh, guide, you could insert your optical fiber through the holes of your body and you can image what is going on inside the body which is not in your line of sight. Right? So, in fact, Kapani had first used it for endoscopes and he actually recorded improved imaging with an optical fiber. Right? So, the concept of endoscopes existed as early as that and but it was not used for communication because the source was not cheap and it was not available. Detectors were not cheap and was not available and the fiber for longer distances the attenuation was very high. For short distance like an endoscope even a lossy fiber would, would have been uh, okay. So, the next breakthrough came in 1960 when uh, multiple labs simultaneously demonstrated semiconductor laser. Beyond that the next breakthrough came when you started using or you, you identified people identified what is that material which will give you low loss when you are trying to transmit light from one point to the other. And uh, Kao and Hockham, these were the people who suggested that glass should be the material. In fact, Kao suggested silica glass should be the material. And Corning glass first made a commercially deployable fiber which came in 1970. Right? The first fiber that was commercially deployed had loss of 20 decibels per kilometer, which means 20 decibel would mean that the signal power decreased by a value of 100 by a scale of 100 uh, after propagating through 1 kilometer of fiber. The link, the commercial link was established in the US in the Northeast Corridor 1983, it is as late as that. Even though the fiber was deployed, you need to you needed to uh, improve the fabrication procedure for so that you can generate or draw long lengths of fiber with uniform performance across the length and that was uh, required before the first fiber system was deployed. Then came the amplifiers that was a major breakthrough again 1986 um, Deservoir and David Payne simultaneously uh, demonstrated an erbium dope fiber amplifier about which we will learn in the course and with this amplifiers in place which could amplify multiple colors there was no looking back for optical fiber communication technology. So, you had the fiber which was very low loss, you had the amplifier, uh, then you started 1996 was when the first commercial WDM uh, wavelength division multiplexing system was deployed as early as 1996 we had data rates of uh, 8 times which is 20 gigabits per second for long distances. Uh, the commercial 10 gigabits per second standard came in 1996 and this standard remained as 10 gigabits per second as late as 5 years ago and so many telephones and, and that was around the time or that 10 gigabits per second we would say that that enabled the internet technology to go into very deeper pockets. Right? So, 10, until the point that 10 gigabits per second was used up, there was no need for increased uh, data rate standards. Started 2007 is when the standards changed from 10 gigabits per second, it became 100 gigabits per second and now 
we are talking about 400 gigabits per second, we are talking about 1 terabit per second standards. 1 terabit is not yet a standard, 400 gigabits per second several uh, service providers have started deploying, uh, but, but that is where we are going. So, by the end of the course we would understand the technology that drives the 400 gigabits per second or the technology that would drive the next generation optical communication systems. So, that is about the uh, key developments in optical communication. Mm -hmm.